what's going on y'all what it is so let's go ahead and slide on these topics and the first thing i want to discuss is that sean combs mom janice has come out and defended her son and she's proclaiming that her son is not the monster that they're trying to portray him as now a lot of people are getting on janice but i asked the question what do you expect a mother to say about their son even though we may feel that it's BS, right? Now, my mom was built a little bit different, right? And she was definitely a woman of God, but I can see her now saying, if I was in the same position as a Diddy, she would be like, I'm not believing nothing that Ninja says until I see further evidence, especially if I was on tape putting paws on a woman like Diddy was putting paws on Cassie. Nah, she wants to see the evidence before she tries to even stand up and defend me. And this is coming from a mama's boy. I love my mother and my mother loved me, but she always told me, son, I love you, but I'm not going to lie or cloak for you. Now, in my estimation, Mrs. Combs has been a bit of an enabler of Diddy over the course of his career. And we cannot forget that she was a pimp back in the day, so the apple doesn't fall far from the tree. Now, what I want to do right now is play you guys a couple of clips as it pertains to Mrs. Combs coming out and speaking in defense of her son. And then I'm also going to play you guys a clip of Dr. Shakur explaining what she heard from an insider based off of the fact that when Diddy would throw some of his parties, they were actual rituals to the Roman god Bacchus. Okay, so sit tight and I'll be back. Y'all, Diddy's mother, Janice Combs, has spoken, and she wants us to leave her baby alone. Let me read this for y'all. Janice says, I come to you today as a mother that is devastated and profoundly saddened by the allegations made against my son, Sean Combs. It is heartbreaking to see my son judged not for the truth, but for a narrative created out of lies. To bear witness what seems to be a public link my son before he has had the opportunity to prove his innocence is a pain too unbearable to put into words. Like every human being, my son deserves to have his day in court to finally share his side and prove his innocence. I'm not here to portray my son as perfect because he is not. He has made mistakes in the past, as we all have. My son may not have been entirely truthful about certain things, such as denying he has ever gotten violent with an ex-girlfriend when the hotel surveillance showed otherwise. Sometimes the truth and a lie become so closely intertwined that it becomes terrifying to admit one part of the story, especially when that truth is outside the norm or it is too complicated to be believed. This is why I believe my son's civil legal team opted to settle the ex-girlfriend's lawsuit instead of contesting it until the end, resulting in a ricochet effect as the federal government used this decision against my son by interpreting it as an admission of guilt. It is important to recognize that none of us, regardless of our status, are immune to fear or mistakes. Not being entirely straightforward about one issue does not mean my son is guilty of the repulsive allegations and the grave charges leveled against him. Many individuals who were wrongfully convicted and later exonerated had their freedom taken from them, not because they were guilty of the crimes they were accused of, but because they didn't fit the image of what the society considers to be a good person. History has shown us how individuals can be wrongfully convicted due to their actions or mistakes. She then says, watching the world make jokes and laugh at my son's life crumbling before our eyes is something I can never forget. It is truly agonizing to watch the world turn against my son so quickly and easily over lies and misconceptions without ever hearing his side or affording him the opportunity to present his side. These lies thrown at him are motivated by those seeking a financial gain and not justice. These individuals saw how quickly my son's civil legal team settled his ex-girlfriend's lawsuit, so they believe that they can receive a quick payday by falsely accusing my son. False allegations of SA thwart the victims of SEX violence from getting the justice they deserve. To make matters worse, the federal government is now using these lies to persecute my son. This injustice has been unbearable for our family. The worst part of this ordeal is watching my beloved son be stripped of his dignity, not for what he did, but for what people should lose, choose to believe about him. I ask his supporters, fans, colleagues, friends, and the public to not judge him before you've had the chance to hear his side. I beg you to think about those who have been wrongfully persecuted to remember that not everyone who has made mistakes in life deserves to have their entire existence judged by a single action or a few mistakes. My son is not the monster they have painted him to be, and he deserves the chance to tell his side. I can only pray that I am alive to see him speak his truth and be vindicated. Respectfully submitted on behalf of Janice Smalls Combs, Janice Smalls Combs, and the Combs family. What do, what do they say? Behind every trifling man is a, you know, enabling mother? You know what? She wants him to have his day in court, though. How do y'all feel about her statement? My son isn't a monster. My son has not had his day in court, and yet everyone feels like he's guilty. I've watched the world make jokes of my son's life crumbling before everyone. These are some of the words of Miss Janice Combs. Um, I don't know who wrote that letter, but she did not write that letter. Miss Combs said the only reason Diddy is in this situation is because his company, his people, decided to settle with Cassie too soon. 
He never got his day in court. And so everybody else is coming at him for a money grab. And I quote, sometimes the truth and a lie become so closely entwined that it becomes terrifying to admit one part of the story, especially when that part of the truth is outside of the norm or is too complicated to believe. It's too complicated for this man to admit that he abused his ex-girlfriend Cassie for over 10 plus years I don't think that's complicated I think that's being a man and owning up to your shit Jean Deal I'm not falling for this shit. I know something is up I don't know who's paying you I don't know where you're getting your money from but telling everybody now that Usher and and Diddy had a relationship and that story came from record executives boy I'm not buying that shit because of this and that situation led Usher to the hospital now I let Usher explain that to y'all I let Usher tell that story but how dare you say a man that groomed you, you gonna give him a pass. Now I'm telling that because you take enough of somebody that. Now either Gene Deal is getting money all of a sudden because all of his stories are turning around or he's scared. I don't know which one. Y'all figure it out. People are alleging that the night that Britney Spears got carried out unconsciously was the night that she was allegedly at a Diddy party and may have been ugged. I don't know if that's true or not. So I'm just putting it out there for y'all to dig up. On top of that, Diddy's in case will be sealed. The public will not see any of it. So I won't be able to go through any of that stuff until somebody drops it. Sorry. Drea Kelly is dropping a tell-all book. And baby, I'm, I'm not going to lie. I'm very interested to see what she has to say. I kind of want to read this. She did have mentions of Diddy in the video, but she didn't say anything about it, but I'm going to read it. And last but not least, what if Diddy is innocent? And this is just another attempt to take a down a successful black man who has become too powerful for them to control. Honestly, I thought about that. I, I really did think about that. But then Cassie came out and Don came out. And, and those are two women that are very close to him. Those are two women that have been around him most of their careers, if not all. There's too much of it for some of it not to be true. I'm not saying everything is true, but what I am saying, everybody deserves their day in court. Everybody deserves to go through the process and we will see who will be presumed innocent and who will be presumed guilty. Um, but right now, baby, it's up in the air. It is up in the air. And if Diddy is innocent of every last lawsuit outside of Cassie, I will publicly give an apology. I sure will. But for right now, I'm sticking by the women until they give me a reason not to do it anymore. Hello everyone, I'm Dr. Amadai Shakur. An inside source told me exactly why Diddy was having those freak offs and what they were representative of. So let's get into it. So these well parties were supposedly rituals uh, to the Roman god Bacchus and the festivities that they had back in the days of ancient Rome known as Bacchanalias. No, they consider Bacchus the god of wine, intoxication, freedom, and ecstasy. And I find this interesting because at Diddy's parties, uh, they said they were given copious amounts of alcohol and also illegal substances. One of those illegal substances is the same name as what they engaged in, okay, in the physical form back in ancient Rome, okay? They say that there was ecstasy put in people's drinks okay please pay attention now if you look at this painting of Bacchus you can actually see the picture next to it with Diddy uh, this is something that he had at his party there was a woman lying on the table in her birthday suit and there was food placed on her and the people were eating it off of her specifically Diddy now as you can see you see the grapes and everything the same fruits and all of that that are in the picture of the painting of Bacchus now I'm sure this isn't a coincidence now, the reputation for the Bacchanalias came to be that they were viewed as festivals of debauchery and promiscuity. And so in 186 BC, the Roman Senate decided to prohibit them. Okay, so they put a stop to it except for special or certain occasions by certain people. Okay, and they were initially done in private. They were done in secret, just like Diddy's freak offs, okay, from the sounds of it. And also, back then in ancient Rome, it was perfectly fine for men to be dealing with men rather than women and without them being viewed as not being masculine. Okay, that, that all sounds very reminiscent of Diddy. Please pay attention. And another reason there were problems for the Bacchanalias and they wanted to get rid of them is because they said people were engaging in occult practices, okay, black magic and doing nefarious things, which also is reminiscent of Diddy because it has long been rumored that Diddy dabbles in voodoo. And not for good purposes, mind you, okay, for nefarious reasons, okay, with the darkest of intentions, allegedly, of course. All right, so you guys just heard all of that. 
And listen, logically speaking, we know that every claim and every accusation against Diddy is not true. I mean, let's just keep it real. There are a few people out there that's looking to grab some money, but we know that there's some horrific things that are true in the same breath. And so I can understand Janice just wanting a fair process for her son. She has a right to request that, but it doesn't mean that we the public have to honor that. After we saw that Cassie video and other things that have transpired, it's almost hard to give Diddy a pass right now, you know, and she is getting up in age and it's a sad situation when you look at it but you can't blame nobody but your son he put himself there and in my estimation again i'm going to reiterate this you did enable him in my humble opinion now legally diddy does have a right to due process he has a right to have a fair trial but i'm wondering is he going to make it there because radar online is reporting that clive davis is shaking in his boots and we're going to talk about that shortly but i want to speak on gene dill and when I observed him this last past week or so, after Diddy got locked up, to be quite frank, it seems as though he's exuding a level of compassion, a level of empathy and sympathy, all wrapped into one. It seems as though that Gene is sorry that Diddy is in this position now that he's locked up. See, it's all fun and games when you're talking about certain situations that transpired when you was his bodyguard and the things that he allegedly did. But when somebody's actually locked up, somebody that you have a history with, it could just be human nature for some people to be like, damn, I really didn't think it was gonna get that far. Now he locked up. I know I don't really rock with the man. I said all of these things about him over the years. And so now I feel bad because maybe my testimony and the things that I've said could have been added as a component to their investigation against Diddy. So either somebody has gotten to him because he could be a potential witness against Diddy and be called to testify against Diddy, but it just seems as though that he's having a level of compassion for Diddy. Even though they haven't talked and been cool for so many years, I think that Gene Deal feels bad that Diddy is in this position. Now, as far as the rituals that Diddy was actually taking part of and having these parties and things like that, and they were themed as a ritual to the Roman god Bacchus, listen, we've been privy to the information that there have been satanic rituals going down in Hollywood for quite some time. So this doesn't shock or surprise me. And it's evident, especially when you want to get up there with the big boys and the big girls to reach that $20 million net worth, you have to take part in certain rituals and you're in this contractual agreement and things like that. You're controlled basically. You have to give up something to gain something. So it's nothing new. But anyway, I wanna move along and I wanna talk about Clive Davis briefly because Radar Online is saying that they got some information from an insider that a top attorney has warned high profile accomplices of Combs that they are about to be named in a new wave of lawsuits and the names are expected to shock everyone and Clive Davis feels that his name is gonna be on that list. And so they're saying that Clive Davis is freaking out behind the scenes and not only him, there are other celebrities that are freaking out too. And he believes that the truth is about to come out. And so I'm thinking to myself, we know that Clive Davis has partaked in some satanic and demonic things over the course of his career. But I think the one thing that he's fearing right now is the fact that the truth may come out about what really happened to Whitney Houston. You know, I really love Brandy, don't get me wrong, I rock with Brandy, but I am still interested in what Whitney handed her, you know, on that set when Brandy was sitting up there with Clive Davis, because it appears that Whitney slid Brandy a note, and to this day, we still don't know what that note said. And then shortly after that, Whitney passed away. And so there has to be some type of connection to Clive Davis, allegedly, in my opinion, right? And so when you look at everything in its totality, even Clive Davis had the nerve to say this about the same night that Whitney passed away in regards to continuing to have the party, have the Grammy party. Check this out. Why did you let the party go on? Of course, this is a personal thing, but the Grammys will the next night. You don't cancel. You turn an evening into a tribute. You, you, know, you did a magnificent evening. Evening into... Did you give a thought to canceling? Never. You never thought? Never. Could never. you or did you ever think... I know the family did not want me to give a thought. Didn't you? Can't, no. Does that sound like a man who cared about Whitney Houston passing away? It doesn't to me. 
See, Clive Davis was scared that Whitney was about to expose him because she went to him asking for more money, asking for more control over her songs and things like that. So in a nutshell, Clive didn't want to give it to her. And so what did Whitney have on Clive? Well, I'm pretty sure that Whitney knew a lot of deep and dark secrets about Clive Davis. And the fact that she knew that and the fact that Clive was not going to give her what she was asking for is the reason, in my opinion, and I'm going to say allegedly that Whitney Houston is no longer here. But anyway, I'm going to let this go right here. I want you guys to drop down in the comments and let me know what you think about everything that was discussed in this video. Don't forget to like, comment, share. And if you're new here, consider subbing to the channel. I get with you guys later. Peace. Hey.